Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how we can join arrays in Power Automate in super quick time without an apply to each, no filter array action, it's all about string manipulation and the select action. So in today's video I have a demo not only showing you how to build that solution but also how quickly it will run on a data set with 5,000 items in two separate arrays and I have a third array just to add in a bit of interest so that not only do we get a one-to-one -one relationship we can also see one-to-many. So we turn those three arrays into a single array by pulling out the fields that we require based on those relationships. So if that's something that interests you, please make sure you continue to watch on. And if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So I'm gonna kick things off from this SharePoint site and I have three lists, one for my orders, one for my order details, and another for my customers. So on screen right now, we have my orders list and I have a customer ID and an order ID. And of course, with my customer ID, I'm going to create a relationship many to one where that customer ID could be repeated multiple times and we want to pull across the customer information. And then I have the order ID, which is in a one to one relationship that will link us up to a record in the order details. So if I jump across onto customers, you'll see that I have that customer ID. I actually only have 10 customers here and a first name and last name. And if I jump into my order details, I have that order ID which of course will give us that one to the one relationship with our orders list and I can pull things across like the date ordered the status and the payment method so the aim here is to join all three of these tables or lists as efficiently as possible so here I am in Power Automate and I have three actions for getting items from that customers, order details and orders list. Within customers, as we only have 10, I haven't changed any of the advanced options, but I have introduced this forward slash as a result of trying to overcome the flow checker error that you get. With the order details and the item orders, you'll see that I've put in a top count of 5,000 for both of them, and that is basically to work within the limits of the pagination and just to give us the best possible performance for this demonstration. I then have two compose actions, and it's all about the length, so we're just checking to make sure that the number of items being returned for the order details and the number of items being returned for the orders are both 5,000. And with that, I'm just going to save and test. So with that flow now complete, if we have a look at the two compose, we can see that we have 5,000 in the first and 5,000 in the second. And if, for instance, I jump into the orders and click to download, we can have a quick look at that formatted JSON, there's a whole host of records, in fact, 5,000 of them, as you'd expect. And it's with that data now we're going to look on how we can join them all together. So if we take a look at a simplified version of our requirements, we have an array at the top for our orders, and we have three orders. And within that, we have our customer ID and also the product that we've sold. In the second array, we have a list of all our customers and we have the ID of the customer. And of course, you can see that one-to-one -one relationship, although in our solution, we've got many-to-one, -one, many orders to, to one customers. We can see how those two arrays relate to each other. Finally, at the bottom, we have a combination or join of those two arrays to give us both the product and the first name last name of our customer alongside the ID of that customer. So it's important at this stage to understand the technique I'm going to demonstrate in order to allow us to query the second array directly using that unique customer ID. So our second and final slide before we jump into building this flow is the original array at the top there for all of our orders followed by an object where we've repurposed the data from the original array to give us this object structure where we have the customer ID as the key followed by the first name, last name within an object. And using that restructured data, we can then query each of those objects of the first name and last name based on the customer ID. And this is where we're going to realize all of this efficiency within Power Automate. So if we have a look at that first expression that we see on the screen right now, if we assume that the object that's on screen is in a compose called the form object order details, we can then query the key 1002 using that expression followed by the first name to return Bob. If we look at the second expression, 
and assuming that item customer ID is equal to 1003, if that was dynamic and we replace that fixed value of 1002 in the first expression that we see on screen with the expression item customer ID, then that dynamic value will be passed across and we can retrieve, for instance, the last name, in which case it would be Williams on this occasion. So using this trick, we're going to repurpose this data from within our array of customers and also in this case, the order details so that we return an object. And then within that object, we can very quickly dynamically query our new data structure in order to retrieve the various values related to that customer or order details. So now onto the fun bit, we're going to add in a couple of actions for each of the get customers and get order details in order to restructure that data and create our object. So first off, I'm going to add in a select and with that, I'll give that an appropriate name. So we'll call this customers. And then for the from, we're going to look up value and the value is gonna be based on customers. So I'll scroll down there and choose value from customers. And then we're gonna use a clever little trick for some string manipulation, turn this select into text mode. If we jump into the expression tab, we're now going to use concat to build out a string based on our customer ID being the key and then the rest of the object being the value. So with concat, we're then going to include our first string, which is just an opening double quote, and that's in single quotes to allow us to concatenate this string. Then we're wanting to get that customer ID and we can query that by using item followed by customer ID. And then if we think back at the example, we would have had the semicolon followed by the object. So we put some single quotes in. We will need to have the closing double quotes, then our semicolon. And after that, we have the object. So if I go to the end, I can put in another comma and our object is based on the value item. So if you're unfamiliar with how a select works, I do have a series of videos, some challenges, some more examples, but trust me, if you put this expression in, this is going to repurpose your data into an array of strings based on that structure that we're looking for. So I can go ahead now and hit OK. So the second part of the solution is to add in a compose. And with that compose, we can now turn our array of strings into an object. Now we're going to do that again using the expression tab. And I'm going to start off by using the join expression, which is going to join all of those string values in our select customer based on a delimiter. Within the join, I'm going to select the customers. I'll then put in a comma followed by a comma in single quotes and that will now give me a string of each of those individual objects joined by a comma. Now that's not going to give us an object structure by itself so if I go back to the beginning of the expression I'm going to use concat once again and with that concat I'm going to add in our opening squiggly bracket for our object and if I go all the way to the end and put in a comma I'm going to put in my closing squiggly bracket to give me that object. And then finally, just to make sure that everything is correctly formatted, if I go right back to the beginning of that expression again, there is a JSON expression, which will ensure that the string is now converted into a JSON object and we can start querying that data directly. So jump right to the end of the expression there and put in our closing bracket. So I'll go ahead and hit OK and I'll give this an appropriate name too. We'll go with customer object. Now I need to do exactly the same thing for our order details, but before I do so, I'm gonna hit test and we'll have a look at the output. So customers is a really good example to look at. We have all our data here with the, the 10 different customers. Then if we have a look at how that data has been repurposed, we can see the strings which contain the ID of that customer followed by the object after our semicolon but currently it's in an array. We can see the, that square bracket at the beginning. Using that clever trick and the compose, we can now see that our data structure, in fact, if I load it up here, has gone from the original array into an object. We open with that squiggly bracket. We have the ID of the customer, 1001 in this case, 1002 here, and this will allow us to now start querying each of these objects based on this ID. And so if I was to go with 1003 and then retrieve the key customer ID, of course I'd get 1003, but if I used first name, I would get Charlie. If I used last name, I would get Williams and so on. We're gonna use that to our advantage in the next stage once we've set up our select and compose 
for our order details. So jumping back onto our flow, I've added in a select now for our order details where that order ID is going to be the key for the object. And also I have that compose, it's doing exactly the same thing, using that array of strings from our select order details array and joining it with a semicolon, concatenating the opening and closing squiggly brackets to give us an object, and then using that JSON expression to make sure that that string is now validated and ready for us to start querying in the final part of our solution. So at this point, we've got two repurposed arrays that are now objects with both the customer ID and the order ID as the key to each of the objects for our customer and order details. And now what we want to do is we want to join values from each of these objects into our original orders array that we had right back at the beginning. So up next, I'm going to add in another select and I'm going to add in the value as our, our source, our from, based on the orders. And then I'm going to create a map. So that map is going to be based on both values that are contained within our orders array but also values that we're now going to dynamically query from those two new objects that we've created for both the customer and the order details. So we'll start off with customer name and I'll go ahead and add in the rest of the keys that I'm looking to obtain. So with my select now configured, I have a map of customer name, product, order ID, order date, status, payment method, and customer ID. I can go and dynamically select product because that's gonna be part of our original array. So product is part of orders. I can also get the order ID because again, that is part of orders. And I can also go ahead and get customer ID because if you've not already guessed, it's part of orders too. But what about the customer name? If we go into the expression tab, what we're gonna do now is we're going to query that object that we've created, that customer object based on the customer ID that we're retrieving from within this array. And to do that easily, if I go in and insert a space I can then jump back onto dynamic content and choose the customer object by clicking here, and then I can start building out my expression. So if I add in a question mark, some square brackets, I can now go ahead and insert the expression item, open close brackets, question mark, square brackets, and in that, we're going to put in the dynamic value that we're going to use in order to query that object that we've created, which we know is prefixed, each of the keys are going to be the customer ID. So that's going to return the object based on the customer ID, which is coming from this select. And then, of course, we want to get, for instance, the first name. So I can type in first name, and if I hit OK, I will now get the first name back. But it's worth noting at this point, because the customer ID is, in fact, an integer, this expression is expecting a string, we need to convert that customer ID into a string. And I'm gonna do that by jumping back into my expression builder here, moving all the way back to the start of this item expression and typing string with an opening bracket all the way to the end of the closing bracket for customer ID and putting a closing bracket. And that's going to ensure that the customer ID that we retrieve back as an integer is converted into a string and then we can use it dynamically. So of course, we've now got the first name in the form of an expression here. I would ultimately like to get the first name, last name. So I'm going to highlight that whole expression, control C to copy it. I'm going to go to the beginning of that expression and type in again, concat. If we remove that opening bracket, I can go all the way to the end of my expression now. I can put in a comma. I can put in some single quotes, which I'll include a space in the middle. So there's a space between the first name and last name. Another comma, if I paste with my control V, I've now got the original expression, which has the first name, but I can change that to last name, and then finally put in my closing bracket for my concat and hit update, and that will retrieve us the first name space last name so that we have that customer name dynamically. So order date, status, and payment method all come from the order details object that we've created. So just as we did before, into the expression, hit space, back to the dynamic content, select that order details expression here, and we can put in a question mark, our square brackets, and this time we can get the order ID, as we know that already exists in this orders table. So if I type in item, open close brackets, question mark, square brackets and single quotes, I can insert the word order ID, 
And of course, we'll get the object based on that particular or order ID. And then if I put in a question mark at the very end, some square brackets and single quotes, I know that the order date is based on a column called date ordered. So I can type that in there. Now, if I go ahead and copy this whole expression, control C, hit OK, I can jump into the status, paste that into my expression tab, change the date ordered to status and hit OK. And then finally, if I go to payment method, I know that that is in fact called payment method. So we can hit OK. Now, just before I go ahead and uh, save and test this flow, I'm jump back into my order details table. You'll notice that the payment method for two of these orders, at least, are missing. So they're null or empty. And I thought it'd be useful just to demonstrate the use of another expression that would help you return a default value if, if for instance, a value is not found or it's null or it's empty. And we can do that by jumping back into our expression for payment method and using coalesce. So what coalesce does, I've covered this in a couple of videos before, it returns the first non-null value. So at the moment, it's going to have a look at this value or this expression, the payment method. And of course, if it's null, it will return nothing. And we can instead return another value. In this case, I'm going to insert a string that says payment method missing. And I can finish that off with a closing bracket and hit update. Now we'll go ahead and save and test. So with that flow now running, the get items will take a few seconds for each of those two actions to complete. But if you watch the compose and the selects that we've used, you'll notice that they complete in a fraction of seconds. And we're joining up those three arrays using this technique in probably 10 or less seconds. So here we go. That's all finished. And if you add that all up, you can see now in about eight seconds, we've managed to take the data from these three individual tables and combine them to give us our final select. And if I go ahead and click on the output, I have my new output containing the customer name, the product, the order ID, the order date, status, and payment method. And you'll note that Bob has got a payment method method missing, but uh, Alice is paid by cash, as has Charlie. And then again, Michael has got a payment method missing. Now, if I scroll further down, and we'll pick one of these at random as a, a wee test, pick out Daniel Anderson here, who is order ABC0057 for a network card. And if you're at this point in building your own solution and thinking, why does your JSON look so neat and tidy? Well, make sure you check out the description. I'll include a link on how to enable your browser to beautify your JSON in line. But if I jump back onto my SharePoint list and we'll search for order number ABC0057, we can see that a network card was ordered for customer number 1009. If we go to customers, we can have a look at 1009, who was in fact Daniel Anderson. And if I go to order details and again search for that, that order number, we can see that it was paid and the method was cash and it was from the 7th of February 2024. And that is the end of the demonstration. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.